I'm going to show you an approach to animating the arm, the arm swing using parenting. Now, granted, there's a lot of different approaches for doing this sort of animation. This is one approach, and this is how um, I've kind of figured out one of the best ways to do it with parenting using joints and using bones. The one thing you have to figure out is, do I want to animate the joint or do I want to animate the bone? If you animate the bone, the pivot point needs to be up where the joint is because technically this is all one piece. The joint and the bone aren't actually separate. Like the bone just pivots at the joint. So if you want to animate the bone, then you move the pivot point up here and then it pivots right where the joint is and then everything else is just parented along. So right now I have one key where it just sort of swings up one direction. So let's say this is the height of the back swing. Now if that's the back swing of the this arm, I probably want to back it off some. I probably don't want it to be that high, maybe something like that. It doesn't need to be really that high on a back swing unless you're really putting a lot of energy into it. Right, and then I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm actually kind of just choosing a couple keys to, to do this with. I can change my timing later, I can adjust my timing, but I'm kind of setting keys. And this is one approach where I do it where at the end I'm actually going to chop off some frames once I get the whole motion working right, just so you can see sort of my approach. So I'm going to set a key here just by swinging it forward this way. You really don't need much more than that, right? And if we look at the the rotation value, here it's uh, 38, here it's 43. So I'm going up a little bit higher on the forward swing than the back swing, right? But now I'm gonna go here, and you don't have to choose those numbers exactly. Those are just sort of arbitrary numbers that I rotated at that look right to me uh, for this animation. One of the things I'm gonna do is make sure, like here we have, because of the way I have this, uh, I initially set it up to parent, I just kind of went down the chain. So shoulder, upper arm, elbow, lower arm, wrist, hand. And so that's the stacking order. So the shoulders, the one that's most in front and the hand is all the way in back. And I wanna kind of set it up so that the bone don't, doesn't look like it's going through the joint. And I'm rotating the joints and parenting the bones to them, which is really kind of accurate in how it should be, just to kind of get that idea. But I'm going to put the arms behind all the joints so I can just move all the joints kind of up in that order and now it looks like the joints are in front of the arms just kind of as a visual thing but the the it obviously changes the way this looks but they're still parented in the same way I haven't changed the parenting at all so when I go here I'm going to actually back this up a little bit and I'm going to use this it's just a little bit easier you know so that's sort of the back swing and then I'm going to go to the forward swing. I'm going to rotate these up. Actually, I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to rotate these up. So these are kind of my key positions or my uh, extreme poses. We call them extremes. Right? So now when I, when I um, sort of preview this, I can kind of see that full swing. Now I'm going to duplicate these keys over here so I can get a full swing out of it. And actually, since I'm going to do that, I'm going to select these keys. And I'm just going to kind of move them over a little bit, kind of give me some, myself some room. Then I'm going to select these keys. I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to drag them over here. Whoop. It didn't quite match up. Whoop. I'm just making a mess of things now. So click and drag, and then hold down Option, and I'm going to drag this over, say, to here, so it's kind of equal. Now if I turn on looping, this frame right there and this frame is, uh, should make it a full loop, right? So I just have it coming back and forth. The problem with this is it's just like a metronome, right? It, and this part of the uh, arm, the lower part of the arm, is coming up uh, before the shoulder. Now the shoulder should come up first and these should lag behind. So before the shoulder gets to its height and starts returning, I need to, to kind of counter animate. The other thing I need to do is this is gonna, these are all gonna come back down at the same time. You'll kind of see they all start falling back down at the same time, right, to come back down to the center. That's not right either, so I have to do some offset. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it a couple frames down, take this and move it a couple frames down, because that's the height at which they're going to reach. So this is going to reach its height first, this is going to reach its height first, and then finally the wrist. So it goes shoulder, elbow, and then wrist. They're reaching their height and then returning. So you can kind of see that they... 
you know, they sort of lag behind a little bit. This one hits and comes back, this one, then this one hits and come back, comes back, and then this one hits and comes back. I don't have slow in, slow out yet, so it looks kind of mechanical, but you get the idea. All right, so now I'm going to go a couple frames back from here. This is when the arm is coming up. Now, if you notice, the lower arm and the hand are starting to kind of, it looks like they accelerate. They come up faster than the shoulder, right? So I want to go a few frames back on each one of these things, elbow first, and I'm going to back it off. And since this is, you know, the elbow, we're kind of breaking the joint here. The elbow wouldn't bend that much, but it's an animated character, and we have to sort of embellish a little bit, or we have to, you know, sort of break the joints to make it look animated. I know it's kind of an odd concept, but that's what it does. So now when I swing, when the arm swings up, it's not all moving together. It's sort of lagging behind a little bit. And then once the shoulder gets to its height and starts returning, these things kind of fall back down like it's a... Uh, it gets a little bit of a wave, right? That's kind of the wave principle there. Now, if I want it to lag back further, then I can kind of click and drag these. And when this one, this and this should kind of line up. That's kind of the idea. It cascades in a very, in that kind of natural way. Now, you could probably have it over here or something if you wanted to, but and then it would kind of take a little bit longer for the hand. But that's the idea. It's already kind of lagging behind. So I'm going to undo that. Right? So I've got one side working. Right? Now I need to go to the other side. And this is its height. And the reason I duplicated these keys over here is because I want to create this cascade. And so I move these over here and move this over here. And I kind of have the same thing. I wanna, might want to move that a little bit more to, to mirror it. And it's just doing it on the other side. And now I come back. I go back a couple frames. Whoops, sorry. I go back a couple frames. And then I, I back it off, right? So this is it's coming up. The shoulder is coming up to its height and going to start returning. So elbow first. And I'm going to, sorry, back it off a little bit. So it's before it's getting to that height. And I'm going to go a few more frames. Select the wrist. Back it off a little bit, right? I could back it off a little bit more if I wanted to. Because this should be a natural, nice bend. Like, that's where the elbow and, and wrist do bend. So we're not breaking the joints by doing that. Right? So it comes up, gets to its height, and then starts to fall back down. Now, the reason it's not falling back down is because I don't have any other keys. But what I want to do is move these over here. So I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to option drag it over to here. I'm going to select this one. Option drag it over to here. Right, and I'm going to end up getting rid of these keys. I can kind of pull them away if I wanted to, but I'm going to end up getting rid of them. Right, back off. All right, so now you can see that it's when it's coming forward, it's mirroring what's going on over here on this side. Right, and if I want, I can you know kind of get it to cascade a little bit more like I have here. Maybe go there, and then this key and that key match up. Now all I have to do is kind of get rid of these keys, but the best thing for me to do is to insert a keyframe here and then duplicate it over here. So this and this is natural between these two. So this is a natural flow between these two keys, which is what I want. So if I put a keyframe there and I put a keyframe here and then I mirror them on the other side, I just option drag over to here, select this one, option drag it over to here. Now I've duplicated that. Now when I run my animation, you can kind of see it's duplicating these keys. It does kind of stick over here. So what you could do is knock one frame off, and now it's kind of flowing nicely. So the other thing that's happening is it looks very mechanical because I don't have slow in, slow out. So I'm just going to add that very quickly. Click the key, option drag, drag out the handle. Click the key, option drag, drag out the handle, drag out the other one, lock them together. I don't want them to be broken. So then I'm going to drag that one out. And now I should have something that's giving me some slow in, slow out. I don't worry about that because I'm going to take out these frames at the end. So then I've, I should have a nice flow. If we just look at the shoulder, it's going up and slowly returning. Now if I want to accentuate that a little bit, I can drag these handles out. Then it's going to go faster when it's down in the center and slower when it reaches up to either end. So notice that I can do this while it's previewing. 
See that how it goes slower or it goes faster in the middle and slower to, to reach its height and then slowly returns but faster in the middle. To me that looks right. So your uh, arm swing depending on the pace and how it's swinging it might look different. Your curve might be a little less accentuated but you're still going to have a curve. It's still going to be flat here because I want the speed to speed up here and slow down here. That's slow in, that's slow out. This is fast, it starts to get faster, and then it starts to slow down, right? So the further you drag out these handles, kind of it goes faster here and slower here, right? So I need to find a good balance for my character, right? So that's the shoulder. Now I got to do that to the elbow. And you notice this is where it's kind of dragging behind. So I've got to grab all of these. Anytime it changes this way to this way, it's a change of direction. It's a, the sense this is rotation. It's rotating one way, then it starts to rotate the other. Anytime it does that, I need to have handles. I need little handles to kind of get it to slow down as it gets there. Now this might be kind of aggressive because it's very quick, but we're going to look at that. So even here, it's rotating. It's rotating one direction. It still rotates that same direction, but it's a change in speed. And you can kind of perceive that. In some cases, it could just flow through that. But I want to kind of give it a nice little curve to that. And the same thing here. I'm going to drag out a key or drag out a handle, drag out a handle, get them to lock together. Now you could do this, but once it gets to that point, it's not going to stop and return. It's going to stop and return, or it's actually going to slow down here and return the other direction. So sometimes it's good to do this or it goes a little bit beyond. Right? Oh, undo. Where it goes a little bit beyond and then comes through because if it's flat, that's kind of no motion. So I want to kind of go beyond a little bit and then come back. All right? And then I can do another key right here because that's going to be my final key. And the thing is, is that angle needs to match that angle. All right? So I'm going to try to do something like that because it's flattening out. Right? So that flat and that flat should be pretty similar. Now this is kind of bending up, so we're going to see what that's doing, because this angle is not going to match that angle. So what I could do is kind of bend this up, and then bend this. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't care about that one, I care about this one. All right? so I can kind of bring that, so that these angles, that angle and this angle, kind of match. All right? so that way when it loops around, it's going to go from here to here. All right? So that's the elbow. Now I'm going to go to the hand, and I'm going to do the same thing. And since I've already kind of figured out that that's sort of my angle here at the end, I'm going to pull it that way, right? Drag handles, drag handles, right? I just want it to kind of flow naturally through each one instead of making it look like it's hitting a wall. And that's usually when you have a corner angle like that, that's what the motion is going to turn out like. It's going to look like it hits a wall, and that's not what we want. So that should be it, right? We, these should match. So now when I play through, I have a nice slow in, slow out, all the way from the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist. There's only one last thing I have to do, and that's to take these frames out. And I can just click and drag across them and then right click and remove frames. And I can do the same thing over here and I can actually uh, take my loop range here and I want it to end up right there and then select and drag across these frames and right click and sorry, remove frames. And now I should have the whole thing looping just as it should with um, this being the end this being the start of uh, that side.